Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, not only do I have your update on your weather forecast, I'm showing that we still have a big problem coming as we get this solar eclipse coming in for Monday. Matter of fact, we're still having a big severe weather problem and that has grown as well. We still have a chances for isolated tornadoes, even damaging winds and large hail as we go through Saturday, but it is coming right back for Monday and it's going to be there for Tuesday as well. I think this is going to grow into Louisiana more and into southern Mississippi. This is going to be chances for the gorilla hail as we go Monday and a Tuesday. And that is where some of our biggest problem is going to be. Not only this storm coming in, bringing high winds, chances for tornadoes, even nocturnal overnight tornadoes, and bringing our severe weather risk. But we do have a factor that is coming into play that is changing the level of that severe weather. Plus the big effect that this is going to have, not only the severe weather aspect, but people are going to be climbing towards Texas, towards Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, as they go towards seeing this solar eclipse. And a lot of them don't know there's already severe weather that's going to be out for that morning, for that day, as they're traveling around, as they're trying to get around, and it will be dangerous. This is going to bring chances for tornadoes, large hail, and a lot of flooding coming right behind that. Big time flooding. Now you can see the latest update on the forecast so far for the solar eclipse. I did post this on my Facebook. Links are in the description on all the platforms I'm on, plus on my community page on my YouTube channel. And this is going to update again for today. So far showing your best chances still southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, southwestern Indiana, and the higher elevations in New England to see your best chances. The update I'm showing today before this even comes out showing that it's going to be a lot of clouds and it's not really going to be worth people's time. Plus they're going to be scattering around because all this severe weather that's going to come after this or during this is going to be dangerous. Now you can see this when you look with the Euro and the GFS both in agreement. So this is a Euro as you go late Sunday into early Monday morning. Then as you're going towards seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, it's gonna start raising up with these clouds. And as you go towards noon and one o'clock, as you go closer to your event, it's gonna bring a lot of cloud cover for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, going towards Ohio. As you're getting all that cloud cover, you can see the same thing also with GFS. So late Sunday, going into Monday morning, and as you're hitting around seven o'clock in the morning, it starts bringing up this cloud cover. And as you go towards noontime and a little bit past, you can see how the clouds just start bringing in to that area. And it just raises them up to where you don't have any chance to see any solar eclipse. It is gonna be a lot of cloud cover for you and the severe weather that's kicking up for those days is very dangerous i'll show you in this update now you can see what happened yesterday we do have all of our damaging winds we did have them over florida like i did show you also over here for virginia for those strong winds we even had a tornado report so this is right where i was showing you those strong cells for yesterday plus all the snowfall we had over 300 reports of snow that came down a lot of good heavy snow as well it was a rainmaker for me for milwaukee because we're right along the lake is really warm but this is going to start ramping up matter of fact you can see this morning how bad those impacts did do on everybody else and you still have a lot of power outages so starting with Maine with over 115,000 homes, New Hampshire over 75,000, Wisconsin still over 50,000, West Virginia over 50,000, and New York almost 50,000 without power. Plus you got all these that have over 10,000, all this yellow, 15,000 from Michigan, 28,000, almost 30,000 for Pennsylvania, New Jersey almost 20. There's a lot of power outages going on for this morning. So far bringing almost a half a million homes without power right now. And remember, it's two storm systems that we are tracking. So you can see for our first one, as it comes in for Saturday, it is going to bring you this severe weather, but it's going to bring it late night and overnight hours, bringing you chances for your severe weather as we get that trough and get a lot of vorticity, get its upper level low. And it brings it all night long for Saturday going into Sunday morning. Then as you come in for Monday, it's going to come right back for Monday and Tuesday as you start building up this trough on this next storm system, which is going to be the bigger of the two. As you go late Monday night into Tuesday, it still builds. It's even going to be there also as we go into Wednesday. I think this could be 
upgraded towards Wednesday as well. Now, one thing that's not happening is you're not seeing all this go straight to the north. There is a lot of storms coming out, but there's a lot of winds that's coming from the northwest, northwesterly winds. And this is pushing a lot of your moisture down towards the south and not letting it rise up. As we get this shortwave trough that comes on in for Wednesday and carries the rest of this storm system off towards the northeast as we get that shortwave trough. But that's bringing those winds from the northwest. And that is going to change the level and the height that this severe weather will be able to go. And you can see your latest update on your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation. That the jet stream is coming all the way down. And it's going to come down again after the 10th. And this is going to bring our two systems. Potentially another one coming later and potentially another one after that. But you can see at your 500 millibar winds how this system is going to mile down. So you can see all the strong winds coming in on that trough as it comes in for Saturday. It is coming in strong. It is bringing a lot of damage and winds. And this is going to help with your thunderstorms growing all evening long. But watch as you go towards Monday and Tuesday. All your winds have weakened greatly because it's pushing from the northwest and it's stopping this system from pulling north and it's stopping from a lot of strengthening happening. Still, this is going to stop you from getting a big wide area of a tornado outbreak, but this is still bringing a lot of warm temperatures, still bringing a lot of moisture to the south, right where you're going to be having this come up for Monday, right when you're going to be going over for your solar eclipse, you're going to be having these thunderstorms growing large hail, very large hail coming out of this, plus an MCS as you go into Tuesday, possibly into Wednesday, a mesoscale convective system where you have a lot of thunderstorms almost in a linear fashion pushing to the east, bringing damage and winds also, and maybe some tornadoes could be hidden in there. So you can see the latest pattern. So as you go through Saturday evening, you still get them strong 62 points raising way up. But you notice as you go through Sunday, it will be a little bit further towards the east all the way into the morning. But watch as you go Sunday and then into Monday and Tuesday. That's where it really raises up your dew points. That's where that trough really digs in. And it brings you all them dew points for Monday, for Tuesday, then you can see that the northwesterly winds really start kicking in on this precipitation and your dew points aren't that strong around the Great Lakes. It stays more of a southern event as you go Wednesday. Now it does start climbing for Thursday as you get that short wave trough. It is going to pull this right back up again, possibly for Thursday and going across towards the northeast and maybe even some strong dew points coming overnight for Thursday into Friday morning. So it could stretch a little bit further, but these winds have changed how far north the severe weather will go. And you can see this when you look at your cape and you look at your lift. So as you go through Saturday, you get some strong lift right around that surface low that forms up, bring your severe weather, chances for large hail, maybe an isolated tornado or two, and some damage and winds that's going to come in with the system. But as you go Sunday, you can see it starts lifting up towards the north. You start to get a little bit of convection with that surface low as it raises into Canada and leaves. But then you get that next trough into that storm coming Monday, comes in for Tuesday. Look how it raises north, but then immediately it gets dissipated. Immediately it windows down to almost nothing and everything is severe down here in the south. And you can see as you go into Wednesday and Thursday, there's no lift up here. There's no convection. It's all getting pushed down by those winds, taking away precipitation, taking away everything to the north. Matter of fact, it's pushing everything southern, creating a huge flood concern. But you can see as you go through Saturday from noon and on, starting to get a lot of lightning strikes, bringing chances for hail and isolated tornado, even Saturday night, especially around eastern Kansas, you like your strongest chances for some hail. Then later at night, it goes even lower down eastern Oklahoma. So you can see the lightning strikes as you go through Monday evening. As y'all sitting there, as literally going through around noontime and raising up, everyone's still waiting to try and get a clearing of this solar eclipse and there's a lot of cloud cover. Now you got the severe storms kicking in where everybody's leaving and traveling home. That's going to be very dangerous. Look how you're getting a lot of lightning strikes. And look how it raises up through the day, bringing a lot of lightning strikes and chances for hail, maybe an isolated tornado through the day. As you go all night long, it starts raising up the size of your hail potential. A lot more lightning strikes. All this white is indicative to a lot of lightning strikes, a strong updraft, making those particulates get very big and bringing potentially large hail with it. 
and it gets even larger. As you go overnight from Monday, more nocturnal storms into Tuesday morning. Look at all the big areas of lightning strikes. It's in the white, bringing in chances for large hail. Tuesday morning, getting very big as you go through Tuesday noon and afternoon, going from the DFW and east. Look at this. Now you got Tuesday night, still have large hail coming through. Then as you go overnight, it moves across Arkansas, Louisiana, and it keeps growing for Texas. As you go into Wednesday, bringing this big risk even bigger. That is going to bring gorilla hail. And as you go into Wednesday afternoon, it's going to carry over with all these strong lightning strikes. Everything's being suppressed down to the south. The heat's being pulled up. It will be a chaotic atmosphere. All this is going to be pitch black storms. Your skies are going to be dark and very large hail. That's going all the way down towards Houston as well as you go into Wednesday. I think this definitely will be upgraded also Wednesday and be spread out into Mississippi as these go into the Gulf. Very strong storm coming through, bringing a lot of large hail with it. Now, so far, here's the severe weather for a Saturday. So far, it's a 5% risk. Chances for hail, chances for damaged winds, and you might even get an isolated tornado or two. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. Now, this is where things change. On Monday, you have that 15%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. Also on Tuesday, it's going to move a little bit further to the southern side, but I think this is where it's going to stretch out into more of Louisiana, more of Mississippi. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. You can also see that National Weather Service shows that as you go into Tuesday afternoon for parts of north and east Texas, there will be a MCS may develop a mesoscale convective system. Also, as this moves eastward into the Mississippi Valley for Tuesday night, they could bring chances for a severe threat with stronger cells embedded in the MCS. Could bring chances for overnight potential nocturnals. And you can see the setup here. As you go into Sunday, you start getting a lot of them 60 dew points raising up. Then as you go through your day for Sunday, it raises up some 70s over here for Texas as well. Then as you go through the evening and overnight, you still have them raising up. And then for Monday, it gets even stronger. Those 70s start to come on shore. Very strong dew points. And this keeps going all the way until Tuesday. Just keeps raising up. Matter of fact, it's going to go all the way to Wednesday and Thursday. Bring a lot of strong dew points. Bring a lot of flooding. Now those winds are going to help keep everything to the southern side. But it is going to pull a little bit towards the east and northeast. Because we have that short wave trough pulling through. And that will pull everything a little bit further to the north. But you can see as you go late Monday into Tuesday, it's going to start fluttering all these storms all the way from the south. As you're sitting here with this deep trough pushing all these storms. Monday, now we're in a Tuesday. And you see it's going to stay also for Wednesday, potentially bringing a MCS, a mesoscale convective system, bringing a lot of chances for thunderstorms and chances for tornadoes to come with that line of storms. So watch out as this congeals together. I think this could stretch out more for Wednesday. But it's still bringing another big problem. So you see as you go through Saturday, you got your precipitation in with a severe weather that's coming out with that. And you see as you go towards Monday and Tuesday, it grows in the south, feeding a lot of moisture from the Gulf. It's also pulling moisture from the Pacific on over into this and making this really strong as you go into Tuesday. Still showing Tuesday is going to be your strongest day overnight and into Wednesday. I think this will be upgraded. That right there is going to bring you a big flood risk. Huge. Showing as you go Monday and Tuesday, really ramping up. But Wednesday and Thursday, all the way till Friday, a little bit further towards the southeast. But look at this. Now it's bringing anywhere from four inches to potentially 10 plus inches of rainfall for northeastern Texas, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and going further down Louisiana. This could come further into the city for New Orleans. You can see this as that front pushes through. It all depends where the placement is going to be on that MCS. And it does carry towards the southeast, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee. And it will bring some more towards the Carolinas. A big heavy swath of heavy rainfall coming with the rest of these threats. You can see almost the same thing on GFS. And usually those two are not in such agreement with each other look at this heavy swath of rainfall is coming down just in a matter of a few days this is going to be a big time flooding event if this shows 
true in the coming patterns with the, the model runs, this is going to be a moderate level or higher flood risk. Now, just for trending purposes, you can see with the Canadian also showing a lot of that heavy flooding and showing a lot of precipitation coming towards the Midwest on that storm system leaving out. So once again, you can see all the strong winds that is coming aloft for this storm system, really raising up your severe threat as you go through for Saturday. And this is going to be late night overnight, and this is bringing a lot of damage and winds. But once again, you can see for Monday and Tuesday, a lot of weak winds down here in the south, and it's not going to be as strong. Then when that short wave trough comes in and pulls all this for Thursday and Friday towards the east-northeast, could bring a storm system with that. I will keep you updated. But so far, showing a lot of winds. This is with the ensemble of the Ural. Showing it's going to come in fast. It's going to bring in the 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts with it and in higher elevations potentially of Colorado and Wyoming in the Rocky Mountains. It could get anywhere from 70, 80, or 90 miles per hour plus as we get to upper level low and it just rotates and brings all them strong winds across and you see it does go across the central plains now you when you look with gfs you can see it's almost showing the same thing the only one that's a little different is the canadian canadian is showing that also especially the high wind section but look how it carries across as it goes for thursday and friday as we get that short wave trough pulls this further towards the east and northeast could bring more 50 miles per hour wind gusts with that as well as that comes across for thursday and friday i will keep you updated so far this is the only model run shows that it will linger further to the east euro and gfs shows going to go on a high ridge and it's not going to have a chance to do this also another quick update when you look at your AO, your arctic oscillation you see when this big above average pattern we got a big warm-up coming the cold air is retracting back but as we go into may the cold air might be coming back again. And that has been your latest forecast on what's going on with this storm system. Thank you again for your time, everybody. Hope you have a very great day today. If you did like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Help show support for it. I do appreciate it. If you know someone that's going towards Texas or Oklahoma or Arkansas or even Louisiana to go towards this solar eclipse, please warn them of what's coming with this because it will be crazy traveling as they're trying to leave this event. Now, before you go, a quick word, Luke 21, 25 through 28. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things be begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. We can all see the signs are coming. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not coming on the 8th, but these signs are leading up, showing that he is close. And remember, he said, Follow the signs just like you follow the weather. You see all the storms coming, you know what the weather's going to be like, so follow the signs and you know when Jesus is coming. We even have the moon turning red, and it's not what you think. Matter of fact, there is rust that is on the moon turning the moon red. What do you think about that? I think that is very odd that they're showing that there's iron on the moon, and now the iron is rusting and the moon's turning red from that. Not from any kind of eclipse or anything going on. The moon's turning red itself, everybody. So pay attention to the times. Remember, the locusts are going to be coming next. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Remember, all glory does go to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day. Everybody, please warn others of what's going on with this eclipse. It is going to be a bad scenario for whoever is going to that area.